Information about a tragic shooting at a block party where three people were killed. According to Houston police, a total of 11 people were shot in a drive-by. HPD says two men died at the scene and a third man was taken to the hospital where he later died. As for the eight other victims, seven of them... You hear all this shit happen? I mean, look, 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 look like, where was the news about this? Three dead, eight inches? <laughs> when the fuck did this happen? Like, I mean, like, where was the news? This is, I, I haven't heard nothing about this. Tragic shooting at a block party where three people were killed. According to Houston police, a total of 11 people were shot in a drive-by. HPD says two men died at the scene and a third man was taken to the hospital where he later died. As for the eight other victims, seven of them were men between 22 and 49 years old and a 43-year-old woman. All are now expected to survive. Investigators say a large crowd was at a block party when at just before 2.30 Saturday morning, at least three suspects inside a car started shooting at the crowd. And new tonight, we're hearing from the loved one of Breon Stewart, one of the victims. Stewart's fiance tells our Katira Winfrey she prays someone finds it in their heart to come forward with information. Keep on. Last night for Ashlyn Winter was a night like no other. Definitely disbelief like being home and him not coming last night, just being here and him not here. Hoping he walked through the door kinda, that was, that was kind of sad. Um, Ashlyn. Look at those fucking lashes, man. Her fiance just got murdered in broad nightlight at a fucking block party. <laughs> she, put, she put on some lashes. Come catchers. <laughs> Salute the baby king, man. He says, keep us humble. I support the channel. Cairo doing. I'm going to show you all some pictures of Cairo tomorrow, man. My son, man. He's, 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 he, yeah, I'm going to show you all some Cairo. Pictures. Yeah, man. He yeah, might show you all a picture tonight, man. Um, He said, drop the link for Javon. The link is in, uh, the link ain't in the, I didn't put the link in the, um, in the, in the description box, you did. Okay. Yeah, that's how I got here. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, I, Gliders and uh, Umbritas are doing this shit too. To be fair, Gliders and Umbritas are doing what shit? That those cum catchers, they are. Not to that extent. No, no sisters are doing it too far. But trust me, Umbritas. Not, they're not doing after. It. Not after her fiance was murdered. Like, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> That's I'm true. Just saying, I'm just Brita, saying, I don't think. I'm Brita's I don't think do it heavy. Were... I'm do it heavy, but glider women do it too, though. Yeah, all right, man. But uh, yeah, this is it's just, you know, like. Um, this, is, this is too much, though. I, I agree. I mean, if you, if you didn't know what we were talking about, though, like, just based on her, you know, mannerisms. And her demeanor. I agree. Like, I agree. You know, she could be talking about, you know, a pothole not getting filled or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. Salute to um salute to my man um Jose, man. Um shout out to Jose, man. Um salute to Aster J, man. He says, um he says, uh Rolls Royce, oh boy, switch. I call your name. Um, OS band, tell me if you still can. Um, SOS band, yeah. Um, Shaka Khan, Hollywood. I gotta check that one out. I haven't, I haven't heard Hollywood. Tony, 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 whatever you want. That's one of my favorite songs. M2 Me, Juice of You, yeah, whatever that, whatever you want by Tony, Tony, Tony. That's crazy that their best song is the one. Where Raphael Sadiq don't sing the lead, and I love Tony, Tony, Tony. But I was, I was always like, "Damn, that's crazy, man." Um, maybe uh, they get, had Dwayne sing that song because he um, might have had the right voice for it. But that's that that's that's their that's my favorite Tony, Tony song. And and and, and Raphael Sadiq is not singing the lead, which is ironic, man. Um, Shout out to um Patrick Lawrence. He said, drop the link for Javon. Shout out to he says, Ah, can you drop the link for Javon? Appreciate it. I did drop it. It's in there. Is he right there? Did he come up? 
Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, shout out to Don Wrinkles, man. Don Wrinkles. I love music talk more than anyone. But can we get back to the elderly goddess getting steamrolled by other servants? <laughs> yeah, man. Nice um, to take a break. Yeah, definitely, man. Facts. Last night, just been hearing him not here. No. Hoping he walked through the door, kind of. That was, that was kind of sad. Um, Ashlyn is in the beginning the stages nice of part. grief, trying to figure out life moving forward without the love of her life. 23-year-old Brian Stewart. Really so genuine, can light up a, a whole room with just his smile, his words. Real genuine, so. Just before 3 o'clock Saturday morning, she got a devastating call explaining how chaos and gunfire erupted at this Northeast Houston intersection and her fiance ended up caught in the center. It's unexpected. She says anxiety typically keeps Stewart away from crowds like this. Person that you with for so long every day and then finally is permanent, like you're never gonna see them again, that hurts. That's a different type of hurt, like I don't wish that on nobody. She's experienced devastating loss before, but she didn't cope alone. We was both able to grieve our baby together, and I was on my own, but this time I'm on my own, like grieving him. Tragedies like this, she says, your feelings change minute to minute. Right now, she and Stewart's mother lean on one another. Their shared grief, somehow holding each other up with help from hope and no a prayer. Cares. So I pray, like, if you know something, you, you say something. Reporting. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Calvary, a.k.a. the real MVP, coming through once again. Wow, man. That's crazy that that happened, and we didn't really hear nothing about it, man. That's crazy. We well, begin you know, tonight with the developing them, story. A hmm? According to them, uh, crime is... Uh, to the court of the Democrats, you know, crime is at an all-time low. You know, everything's yeah, okay. Yeah, down, man. Yeah, thank God, man. We begin tonight with the developing story. A 16-year-old girl was killed and five others injured when a car drove into a crowd following a fight in downtown Minneapolis. Police tell us 22-year-old Latalia Margali was arrested on murder charges hours later. The family of the victim is dismayed and outraged. Latalia Margali, she looked like she might be... Uh, something she she Indian or something? That's a, a Melungeon. Yeah, that's I was gonna say black. uh, I'm Hawaiian. A Melungeon. Yeah, something. She not Hispanic and she not black. Italia Magali. Over what happened, a Richard Reeves spoke with family members and also has more from the police chief, Rich. Yeah, Callum. Both Chief Brian O'Hara and that 16 year old's family call what happened a senseless act. Chief says this was not a random crime, that the crowd was clearly targeted by the suspect. Meanwhile, a family is grieving the loss of a teen they say was turning her life around. Going through the car crowd is a silver SUV left he found on this street. It was a horrific crash that took the life of 16-year-old Demaya Broom. They took my baby away from me. Leaving her family Don't in anguish. My baby was love. She loved people. She loved animals. She loved disabled people. She loved the people that stand on the corner. Anybody that was what? helpless, she wanted to help them. And I wouldn't even let her help her. Little over the top. <laughs> Police and emergency responders converged yeah, on the funeral. street south of Hennepin Avenue around 1220 early Saturday morning after an SUV drove through a crowd of at least a dozen people. There aren't words to describe how tragic and senseless it is to use, to lose a 16-year-old female over something like this. Police Chief Brian O'Hara says prior to that 911 call, there was a fight involving teenagers. That this woman, Natalia Angeli Margali, the SUV driver, was present during that fight and then used her vehicle, he says, as a weapon. At some point, that suspect got in an SUV, backed up down Hennepin Avenue, and drove into a crowd that was uh, between the sidewalk and the roadway. Broom later died at the hospital. A 29-year-old woman now has life-threatening injuries and is in critical condition. Four others, including two 14-year-old girls, have non-life-threatening injuries. Here's my thing. And listen, we got a spot like this in D.C. called Adams Morgan. We got a bunch of spots like this, but that's the main one, right? U Street, Adams Morgan, where gliders share nightlife space with sons, man. 
Like, what's the um? Can, can some of you gliders give me the calculus on that? Like, what are you? What what is that like? How does that work when you like? I'm gonna go to this shared sun glider nightlife space, man. Like, what is your um when you're leaving the house or when you're getting ready or when you're planning to? What are you what's going on in your mind? Survive. <laughs> is my life insurance policy up to date? No, I mean, what makes you go there? Like, of all the places, like. Like, like, why not just go to an area? Because there's plenty of areas where, you know, it's just a glider area. You know what I'm saying? There's bars, the club, gliders frequent it, and there ain't no suns around. Maybe some sun str- straggler, homeless guy out there begging or some sun man, you know, playing the guitar or something with a fucking pan in front of him for change or some shit. But I'm talking about, like, areas where little homies is walking around, Groups of like hood rats and their best like little black dresses and shit walking around and you know what I'm saying like what make you go down there? A different type of glider. This right here on the screen ain't no different type of glider, Jack. Uh, probably just uh, a girl, probably pussy. Is it like the danger kind of like adds to the experience? No, no, it's like going to the zoo. It's like jumping out of a out of a moving car. I mean, it's like it's like going to the zoo, man. You know, you want to you go on a little safari in Africa, and you in a little truck, and lions and shit be out there. Man. Four others, including two 14 year old girls, have non life threatening injuries. Yeah, like it's little 14 year old girls out there and shit fighting in the street. They like, uh. have non life threatening injuries. Whose family still trying to come to terms with a terrible loss. We do desire justice. And I'm saying it like this that this young lady, my niece, didn't deserve this act. Police say they arrested Mark Ali along Bryant Avenue North about an hour later on suspicion of murder. Room's family says in this difficult time, they're looking for answers. I just want to know why, why this girl did this to my baby and took her from my family. Room's family says she loved to draw and was a favorite of her nieces and nephews that she had recently transferred from Spring Lake High School to the Minnesota Internship Center and wanted to pursue a career in nursing. Police say they're still investigating for a motive in this case. Well, so she was trying to turn her life around. Then an attempted robbery turning into a murder investigation in University City. Two men tried to rob a man working on a car. He ended up grabbing one of the suspect's guns and fired back. And those shots in an attempt to protect himself would kill his own mother, who is inside. Yo, wow, son, sorrow. Okay, that what that dude the other day asked me, Do you hate black people? No, but I bet this guy does. <laughs> I bet he does. <laughs> Then an attempted robbery turning into imagine. a murder investigation in University City. Two men tried to rob a man working on a car. He ended up grabbing one of the suspect's guns and fired back. And those shots in an attempt to protect himself would kill his own mother, who is inside their home. This happened last night on North Drive, just a few blocks north of the Del Mar Loop. Our John Kipper is here with what we know. She never did nothing to nobody. Mariah Bean lives next door to Ashley Selman. She's still in shock. Bean says she and Ashley walk their children to the bus stop every morning. She was fun, just loved everybody. She was oh, really man. the type of woman you could leave your kids why, with. Why they all the same? Make yeah. Sure yeah, every black person that get killed was a saint. That's crazy. <laughs> it was they, just no, it's like fun. they're reading off of a fucking cue card. Like, she loved everybody. Like, nobody yeah, loves was. everybody. Shit. It was just fun loving. <laughs> Every Happy go lucky. <laughs> if there was people on the moon, she would love them. She loved people. If there was somebody speaking under a car, she loved them too. She said she loved homeless people. Like she would just give homeless people her clothes. 
And we know that's not true. But we know that. Shit is crazy, man. We talk about some crazy, crazy shit, man. Mm, mm, mm. Under the bus stop every morning. She was fun, just loved everybody. She was really the type of woman you could leave your kids with and trust her and make sure that everything was safe. But what happened Sunday night ended the Man. walks and what Bean describes as a robbery gone wrong, someone uh. shot and killed inside her own apartment. Literally to be right next door is yeah. blowing my mind. Hey, according to University City Police, Carleon Boyd and Terrell McCann Jr. attempted to rob Selman's son. <sighs> That one little, that little, the hair, that little piece right there, that's the only good hair in his head right there. <laughs> All the rest of them, satanic, demon seated. Ah, damn. Look the part, too. These niggas look the part. Do you hate black people? Mm, mm, mm. Police Carleon Boyd and Terrell McCann Jr. attempted to rob Selman's son, who was working on a car in an apartment complex on North Drive. But her son quickly snatched Boyd's gun and flipped the script, shooting at both suspects and even wounding McCann. But McCann used his weapon to shoot back, and a bullet went through the door, hitting Selman. It's, it's an unfortunate, random event. First of four found a door with a bolt hole inside the apartment complex, as well as a car with what appeared to be random. through the windshield. That these random acts of violence are horrible, uh, but we are committed to ensuring the safety of all of our residents. At the woman says police arrested McCann on scene. He remains in the hospital. Officers tracked down Boyd later that night. Both are charged with second degree murder and first degree attempted robbery. And caught in the crossfire, Selman leaves behind four kids. One as young as seven years old. She's a little older than me, so she was kind of just like a mom or big sister figure to me as well. So she will be missed. According to University Damn City Lashes. Police, this is the first murder to occur in New City this year. And looking at crime <laughs> stats, four murders occurred in New City. Oh, that's why they say it's random. University City. Shit. John Fox, a quiet evening in University City turned into a nightmare when an armed robbery spiraled into a deadly shootout. Fox 2's Taylor Harris is live in University City tonight with more details about the tragic chain of events that left a mother dead. Taylor? Yes, Mandy, tragedy struck here in University City as a mother was fatally shot in a violent gun battle that erupted during an attempted robbery outside of her home. Police say 39-year-old Ashley Selman was killed Sunday when her son exchanged gunfire with two suspects attempting to rob him. Prosecutors have now charged 20-year-old Carleone Boyd and 22-year-old Terrell McCain Jr. with second-degree murder and first-degree attempted robbery. Our office believed that that was the appropriate charge. So keep in mind, an A felony has a sentence um, range of 10 years to life in Missouri, which is, which is um, defined as 30 years. According to police, Selman's son was working on a car in the parking lot of their apartment complex when Boyd and McCain approached, putting a semi-automatic handgun to his head. But in a dramatic turn, police said the son disarmed Boyd and fired back at the pair while running towards the house. As Selman's son fled, McCain, who was struck and paralyzed, continued firing. The defendant's um, wow. injuries do not. He was struck and paralyzed. One of the guys was struck and paralyzed and continued fighting. Who was firing. struck and paralyzed, continued firing. The defendant's um, injuries do not factor into our charges. One of the bullets tragically hit Selman as she stood behind her apartment door, killing her instantly. Neighbors were shocked to hear what happened. I Me mean, personally, it's kind of shocking because uh, I haven't heard anything that's been going on around here. And, uh, and all we can do is just basically pray for the family. A family friend told us that car break-in attempts have been on the rise in the complex, and this shooting around 9 p.m. Sunday may have been a random act. The family friend told us the suspects are strangers to them. 
I am awaiting a response from University City Police and St. Louis County Police concerning the case. But as of now, both Boyd and McCann are being held at a $500,000 bond as the investigation continues. Now, yeah. to the New York police shooting and chaos and a 